Good morning. Today we're looking at Section 5, Normal Distributions and Extended Numerical Example out of Chapter 7, Integration of Business Calculus with Excel. The point of this section is an example where we want to use numeric integration because we need to find a specified area, and the fundamental theorem of calculus is not very effective. The setup says that many things follow a normal curve or a bell curve. And what that means, something beyond the scope of this course, is I have a function f of x is m times one over sigma times the square root of two pi times e to the minus quantity x minus mu squared divided by two sigma squared, where m is the population size, mu is the mean or average value, and sigma is the standard deviation. That's a function that I'm going to look at and say, even when I realize that m sigma, pi, e, and mu are all constants, that's still a messy function. I don't want to have to find the antiderivative of it. In this case, it's even worse because by results beyond the scope of this class, using functions that you know, there is no antiderivative. And so we need to use numerical methods. What I'd like to do is find out for a population m, if I've got standard deviation and average value specified, how much is between the upper and lower limits? As mentioned, F doesn't have a reasonable antiderivative, so we need to use a numerical method. To make our life simpler, I'd like to use a function that doesn't have so many parameters or letters in it. And so a strategy that I will imply is to use the standard normal distribution, where mu is zero, and sigma is one, and that simplifies our construction. Also, the population is one. This is going to be looking at the percentage of the population that's in the given region. In order to do that, I'm going to need to convert from my upper and lower values to upper and lower values in z-scores. There's a simple formula that does that, and then the size of my segment comes out to be a straightforward formula. So we're going to do this with numeric integration. All of the problems of this section are essentially using that one numeric integration. Well, I start out by setting up a numeric integration table. And if I look at the formulas, I'm going to start out with the total population, the lower and the upper bound being, as I said, one is my total population, my mean is zero, my standard deviation is one. I'm going to do this with 200 subintervals, and I'm going to use the midpoint formula. Since I'm doing midpoint formula, my initial point will be my starting point plus the number of intervals I'm in minus a half times the width of an interval. I then have f of x, and that's simply the formula I had given before. A couple of things with um, Excel minus x squared in Excel, the minus goes before the x squared, so I want to make it minus 1 times x squared. And when I'm looking at pi, that's pi, open parentheses, close parentheses. It's actually a function in Excel. Those are simply details in writing it down. My rectangular area is going to be whatever my height was times my width. And the area so far is I simply add all of these up. Notice the starting point is fixed and the ending point is wherever I am. And I've decided I want 200 subintervals. Notice I have 200 subintervals. And my final area, I'm going to take my area and just say offset, which means I start here and go down how many subintervals I have. So that takes the value and brings it back up. So this gives us a template that lets us compute the area under a normal curve between two places. I put it back on so that if I want from minus one to one, it's going to compute that out and say 68% approximately is between minus one and one standard deviations from the norm. If I do minus two, 
and two, we'll get that 95% is within two standard deviations of the mean. And so this gives us a template that we can compute with the standard normal curve. You might have something on your calculator that does this or look it up in a table in a book, but this lets us compute with numeric integration the problems that I want to find the area under the normal curve. My next example is I'd like to do this, but not be restricted to a population of one, a mean of zero, and a standard deviation of three. And so I'm going to look at my formulas and say, I have a population that I set in, a mean that I, I'm given in a standard deviation. And so if the mean was 70 and the standard deviation was three, this is going to be C3, 72, minus the standard deviation, which would be give me two, two thirds, is how many standard deviations I'm starting from. And my upper bound 84 is going to be four, is going to be 84 minus 70 divided by three, which is four. That gives me in terms of Z, how far I'm going. My delta X is also in terms of standard deviations. My area is the same thing I've done before. And now the population, I have a population, and I'd like to do that. I'd like to find out how many people are in that area as far instead of what the area itself is. I go back and unshow the formulas. And again, notice, I'm sorry, 84 was 84 minus 70 is 14. 14 divided by 3 is 4 and 2 thirds. And so this is the same kind of problem. And we're talking about now a population of 100,000. If the mean is 70 and the standard deviation is 3, how many people have values between 72 and 84? And we're told it's 25,284. If instead of that, I'm going to say, I'm looking at 10,000 students the mean on the ACT is 36. The standard deviation is six. And I want to know how many people do I expect scored somewhere between a 24 and a 36. And I'm going to say about 47% scored between 24 and 36, which means I've got out of 10,000 students, I have 4,772 that scored a 24 or better on the, S on the ACT. All of the rest of the problems in the chapter are simply taking this one template and using it while changing the population, mean, and standard deviation. Example one, I've got 100,000 men. I know that the height of men is a normal curve. 70 inches, five foot, 10 inches is the standard size and a standard deviation of three. I wanna know how many men are between six foot tall and seven foot tall. And out of my 100,000 men, I'm going to find out that 25,000 are between six foot and seven foot tall. Or in my next problem, I'm looking at women and women's heights. I know that I've got 50,000 women. I'm interested in how many have a height under 60 inches. I know that the heights of women is a normal distribution. An average height is 64 inches or five foot four. And the standard deviation is 2.75 inches. So I'm going to set my problem up. And the easy thing I can find are how many people, how many women have heights between 64 and 60. I work out the standard deviations between zero and minus 1.454 standard deviations. I'm going to get an area doing that backwards of minus 42%. Now we also know that half the women are of a height under the mean. And so when I add one half to that, I find out that seven and 7.28% of my population 
is in that window with a height of under 60 inches, under five feet. Out of 50,000, that turns into be 3,645 women. And so this is how to do the examples in this section. And again, the basic setup is, I want to find the area under a standard normal distribution. I want to modify it so that if I'm given it under any normal distribution, I modify my problem into the standard normal distribution question and plug that in. And then I simply work out what my population mean and standard deviation are. Thank you.